wonderful thing. Democracy has come to Iran. June the 14th, they're going to vote, and, and they're out there. You know, there's the Green Party, and this. <laughs> it, it, it's a farce. It really is a sham, because candidates have to be approved by, by the, the Ayatollahs, and so you have to support the existing regime to a large extent, certainly the context of it, otherwise you won't be allowed to run. I, I saw an interview once um, with an, a, a leading Iranian uh, a cleric and a, and a British journalist, and it was quite funny. It's only since what happened, the, the, the Iranians said, well, it's not unlike Britain. You can't, for example, run uh, to be elected if you don't support the monarchy. And the journalist said, um, actually, probably about half the, the MPs are Republican, and that's just not true. And they go, no, no, it is true, it is true. So, I mean, what, what, what do you say? What do you say? Uh, Ali Asasi is a lawyer, an Iranian exile. He, he knows the country well. I, I'm, sure, I'm sure you wish you could go back. W would you go back to live if you could, by the way? Uh, under your present circumstances? No, no, I mean, if you not could live properly. Uh, I'm not quite sure. It must um, be so difficult. But I mean, certainly not under the current system. No, it, no. it's... Uh, Jules Orwell wrote beautifully about German Jews leaving Germany and still having this incredible feeling of, of missing. Even though the Nazis were in power, it was still their country, and they, they've left and, and lost so much being an exile. It's so difficult. This is, this is a sham of democracy, isn't it? Absolutely. I, I mean, that was confirmed once again uh, last week when uh, certain individuals who have been uh, pillars and demigods yeah. of the, uh, of the uh, revolution itself were not allowed to stand as uh, presidential candidates. Uh, as you know, there were around 680 candidates who stepped forward who wanted mm -hmm. to register to uh, run as president. Uh, but it was whittled down to eight individuals. Out of 680? 680. 680. The others were told they couldn't stand or they were voted out? Yes, correct. Okay. So, so what we remain with are a bunch of uh, colorless uh, functionaries who lack charisma or, for that matter, uh, any sense of a, uh, of a following uh, within the uh, Islamic Republic itself. Uh, the two significant people who were ruled out uh, were, uh, once again, just to emphasize, these were uh, pillars of the establishment itself. Right. The first one was uh, Rafsanjani, uh, who uh, for eight years was president of the was Islamic a, a relative moderate compared to what the alternatives are. That, that's how they, they yeah. uh, like to actually market him. But, yeah. but of course, we know that during the eight years that he was uh, president, uh, it wasn't really a benign presidency no. either. So No. So, so, I mean, he, he's probably one of the best-known Iranian leaders. If you spoke to, to most people, the, the name might ring a bell, but the, the, the others are hardly known at all. But this is the end of Ahmadinejad. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, what happened is uh, that one of his relatives also wanted to, uh, uh, to stand as, uh, as a presidential candidate. He'd been groomed for the past uh, four years. Uh, but, of course, he was dis disqualified as well. Mm. Um, and I understand not only was uh, uh, Mr. Ahmadinejad's protege uh, disqualified, but rumors are that he was called into the uh, Supreme Leader's uh, office right after his uh, protege was uh, disqualified and uh, read the Riot Act yeah. to essentially remain uh, quiet. Uh, and that's uh, pretty much been the case over the past uh, week. I think a lot mm. of people expected him uh, to be uh, uh, very vocal um, in terms of uh, opposing uh, the Supreme Leader and in terms of uh, championing his uh, his relative, mm. uh, but that hasn't been the case. So, so, so there has been tension, hasn't there, but between Ahmadinejad and, and the, the, the Ayatollahs. That there's, it's not unified. I mean, there are degrees of, of tension, of course. It's not that one person is saying, you know, that, that's be really fair to, and, and open-minded. It, they, they agree on much, but there's a certain individual personal difference? Uh, no, I, I, I don't believe this uh, really? really comes down to ideological differences. Uh, the fact of the matter is that since uh, the Supreme Leader has been in office, 1988, he's always had uh, uh, a difficult time with anyone who's yeah. uh, served as president. Um, and that's because he wants to maintain his uh, prerogatives right. and he's not re willing to relinquish uh, any of his powers. Will we know how many people will vote? Uh, and if so, what will the turnout be? Uh, it remains to be seen. Um, I would not be surprised <laughs> if the regime once again actually does uh, attempt to manipulate the numbers mm -hmm. just to demonstrate that there is uh, a semblance of legitimacy left for, for this government. So um, who knows whether they will be uh, playing with the books, so to speak. Uh, but but I, I, I have every confidence that Iranians don't find any of these eight uh, characters mm. uh, who are running as the least bit uh, interesting. Right. Uh, and the reason for that is not only um, are they very close to the Supreme Leader, of uh, and, and of course I should emphasize that four of them actually have kinship ties uh, with the Supreme Leader, uh, but in addition to that, over the course of the past week, 
uh, none of them have addressed uh, all the dire issues that are mm. of, uh, of concern to right. the Iranian public. All they've been doing over the course of the past week is, is trying to curry favor with the supreme leader, and, uh, and uh, they've been trying to demonstrate uh, that, the, you know, that the supreme leader is the font of right. all uh, wisdom. Now, in, in other parts of the region, in, in both the Arab world and Turkey, opposition under dictatorship has been within the mosque community. So the, the, you weren't allowed to form parties, uh, even under fairly benign dictatorship. So opposition w w w was uh, glued together, was educated within mosques. But surely that can't happen in Iran because the, the, the mosques are some of the main supporters of the regime. Or, or have I misread that? Uh, well, I, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't say that uh, the only opposition to regimes have come from mosques. Obviously, uh, there were civil society actors in all of these countries that but were... the most successful. We, think, uh, we look at the Brotherhood the, and its success. It's because they, they had on the ground hundreds of places where they could organize and... and exactly. Uh, the fact of the matter remains that they have the organizational yeah. muscle to actually... Uh, pull their uh, supporters out into the public arena. Yeah. Um, in Iran, um, I think that this uh, regime has been doing such a terrible, terrible job on all fronts, mm. whether it's uh, in terms of uh, suppressing civil society, uh, whether it's in terms of the uh, dire shape of the economy. Um, for example, unemployment is running around uh, over 20%. Uh -huh. uh, inflation is running around 30%. Uh, so this, this uh, regime has demonstrated uh, time and time again that it cannot grapple with all those uh, modern challenges uh, that uh, Iranians face. Mm. Uh, so for that reason, I would, I would uh, hazard to guess that even people who, who might be religious uh, um, really have nothing good to say about this, uh, this particular regime. But it's still not it addressing um, their day-to-day -day <laughs> It's incredible. What will, just very briefly, what will send it over the top? There must be something that will suddenly galvanize enough people to say it's over? Well, uh, as you know full well, uh, unfortunately in 2009 when uh, millions of people came out on the streets, uh, they were uh, brutally repressed uh, by the regime. So even people who are very much uh, dead set against this, uh, this particular regime have to be very careful. Mm. Uh, and they're very and much... Obama uh, did so little to help. Dissolution. Yes, I, I would say uh, most uh, uh, countries did not do a very yeah. good job. Yeah. Uh, the exception probably being Mr. Sarkozy in France, who uh, from the very start was uh, singing the praises uh, yeah. of the uh, protesters on the street. Well, let's see if that would happen now under a socialist government in, in Paris. A pleasure. Thank you so much.